back to the Independent Investor Channel um, for a weekly update. I find these are prudent. Um, I find that these have um, the ability to talk to a lot of people at the same time. I usually jam these into about 60 minutes. Um, a lot to talk about, lots to unpack. Just this week, I had to reach pretty deep uh, to find the motivation to uh, put this content out. A um, lot of thoughts on this company. Um, what has transpired over the last couple of years? Um, how the landscape has, has evolved, um, what, what the hell we're doing, um, putting this much focus, should we leave it for dead? $4.16, the stock price here going into what has been absolutely dismal. Um, I want to talk about a few things that um, I spent about three hours prepping for this video, and I've got some, some thoughts, and I... I'm, I'm very spiritual in my application. I want to make sure that my words are coming through in a way that conveys the most productive and sincere meaning for those individuals that I'm looking to 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 affect. It speaks to my motivation. I've, I've never done the independent investor channel for the sake of, of building subscribers. It's not in my pedigree. It's not what, what I value in life. It is not. Um, I know there's people out there that value fame and fortune and the YouTube opportunity can provide just that. I am not one of those folks. Uh, I have always persevered through, provided content for the sheer enjoyment of doing just that. Everybody needs to have a hobby. I'm just not a very good musician. I love playing guitar. I wish I was better at it. Um, I'm good at this. And where you get reciprocation on a message like this from not only the subscriber base, uh, and thank you uh, for all the staunch supporters out there. Uh, with regard to this topic, it seems unfortunately that um, uh, people are taking sides. Um, and I think probably for all the wrong reasons, some folks questioning my motivation, whether or not I'm trying to save my skin or uh, manufacture a stock hype um, that uh, I feel like is, is futile. I, I don't have an ego about my particular voice on social media to believe in any capacity that what we say has the first damn bit of difference with regard to the stock price and um, manufacturing any type of momentum to the upside or the downside. Um, furthermore, I've, I've kind of let go of some of the criticisms that I've had previously to say, well, the stock has been shorted all through 2021. Garbage. Um, short selling or tax loss harvesting going into the year's end. That must be the reason why the stock's going down. Garbage. It's not. Um, I moved away from what I've known about the stock market for a long, long time. And that is once you stray away from neutral application, it is the fallacy that you run in trying to justify in the short term, a bull and a bear case on a particular stock or a company. I think neutral application comes in what a lot of people throw out there and call due diligence way, way too much and, and way too often. And people really don't understand what a holistic due diligence means with regard to your stock uh, evaluation and what that due diligence means for a company like Hylion Holdings as opposed to Johnson & Johnson. Are they the same? Is it the same level of discipline? Is it the same level of conviction needed? Uh, to justify a position in, in either one of those two. And the verdict is certainly out here. Um, I've, I've said now for months that we have been in dark times, no doubt about it. Dismal. It's absolutely horrendous. How does that play into the neutral application? Does it affect my stock disposition to look at the stock at $4.16 and say, I screwed up or my conviction on the company, which is what I'm going to talk about in this video. 
I say every week, I hold myself to a very high level of responsibility with regard to a social media voice. If my motivation is not such to build up my own message, which it is not, um, I don't want to be known for this. Um, that I believe that I was put on this earth um, to have uh, financial markets investing in the stock market uh, as a critical piece to my life because it has been that for the totality of my life ever since I was 15 years old. It has been there. It has been something that I have paid attention to, and I'm genuinely and passionately engaged in my craft. There's no doubt about it. And different levels of application require different levels of conviction. Uh, does it take the same level of conviction to invest in a company like Highly on Holdings as it does to contribute to 401k? Because your employer says, hey, you need to sign up for this and your fellow colleagues within that specific company say, hey, it's a good thing to invest. Even though we don't know the first thing about uh, investing, they do provide you a little bit of match there and free money is good. So start your 401k because it's a good thing to invest for your future. Does that level of application take the same level of conviction that it does to enter into a highly on holdings? Of, of course not. Of course not. So I think to understand some of the rules of engagement and understanding and defining your own level of engagement that uh, can allow you to uh, enter into this game with some reasonable expectation as to, to what could potentially transpire uh, in an opportunity uh, like this uh, will really help you keep this opportunity uh, with some level of perspective um, and, and keep the emotion, emotions as close to neutral as you can possibly keep it. Um, um, there's some folks that are absolutely passionate about this topic and they don't have a whole lot of stake in the company itself. Um, relatively speaking, I, I would say that um, the, the position that I currently hold which is about 11,000 shares have been doing some buying. And I've had some people say, Ryan, you went from 12 to six to nine to, to now what, 11? Or are you, are you lying to us? <laughs> I honestly don't think as a recipient of, of my message, um, that really should be the key focus. If you're truly interested in highly on holdings and you're interested in it from a position of 100 shares or 10,000 shares, your interest should be understanding where I operate on the fringes, um, where I operate on the margins. The margins being what type of safety net now do I put under this company with four bullets left to shoot, um, or the company goes belly up and they are unable to um, do anything <laughs> that, that has been um, so exciting over the last year and a half, as this company has evolved, what a, what, a, what a catastrophic disaster that would be for the vision, for, for, for the, this team, um, for, for the product and the work and, and, and the infinite amount of hours that have gone into this opportunity even before this company came public via the SPAC process and then uh, voted to uh, come to public markets uh, through the SPAC process. What an, what an absolute waste. Is that possible? If I was going to apply my neutral application, absolutely. Anything is possible in stock market investing. I have owned companies before that have gone out of business. It happens. When I'm on Twitter, and I talk about the reality of lawsuits and people think I'm picking on highly on holdings or that somehow I don't see the full picture, um, I beg to differ. I beg to differ. You can have 100% conviction on a company and that conviction can lead to nowhere. It's pointing out one end of the spectrum where I think a lot of people are ignoring the potential for that spectrum to realize itself in reality. Do I think that that will happen? No, I don't. My neutral application and my due diligence from my lens and using my expertise and my experience in the market tells me that we have an absolutely bright future ahead. And I'm gonna talk about some of the reasons why. 
But one of the notes on my list here to talk about is where my motivation lies to come out with these videos as frequently as I do. Right now, I'm coming out with about one per week. Some might suggest that I'm trying to prop up my YouTube channel by coming out with highly on videos as frequently as I do. When I see that there are YouTube channels out there coming out with highly on videos from channel creators that don't even own the stock. Now there's a few folks that I give an absolute pass to, um, but not many. If in your sheer nature of coming out with a video and mentioning Hylion because it's a popular search, search, um, then you are guilty of using this topic and people's interest and people's emotional tie to the stock right now because a lot of people are underwater by using the topic for your own personal good. That is absolutely the most asinine criticism of the Independent Investor Channel that I could ever hear. The, the reality speaks to the truth. And the truth is I make about $28 per video to get the meager 2,000, 3,000, let's call it in between two and 4,000 views. A lot of new channel creators would kill for that type of uh, feedback. Me, personally, if I got 2,000 views or 20,000 views or 200,000 views or 2 million views, my reaction to that would be exactly the same. I just don't care. The only thing that I care about is educating those investors out there who have taken this ride based on their own due diligence and conviction on this company, understand some of the things that I'm going to talk about, where I put the core value and how that core value branches off into different subtopics that will contribute to the core focus of the mission here as an investor. And that core focus being money. You're going to want to stick around because I am going to break this down for you in a way that really paints a picture to you as to why it is that I do what I do and not as you would presume that I do what I do and where my motivation lies. Second observation that I've had just in the last week, which things typically uh, will have the most uh, potential to get ugly during times like this. I'm a little guilty. I've got a little bit edgy, maybe over the edge on Twitter, no doubt about it. Easily solved by what I responded to Paul with Rat Pack stocks as being in one word, reciprocation. It's like you're yelling at somebody and they won't acknowledge that you're even there. That's the best analogy I can provide to you. And all I am asking for as an investor on behalf of a lot of people that I represent is reciprocation. That is it. Um, there have been elegant responses done up in the correct way. Um, I do acknowledge that an email is about the most uh, really, it's the most un-business-like way of communication. Um, a Twitter, social media, that is not formal communications. That is all informal. Formal communications through investor relations via email, I do consider still informal. In other words, if the energy that I'm going to put into drafting an email expects an equal uh, response on behalf of the time that I've put into that email, then I think my expectations are somewhat lofty. Uh, I actually had a glimmer of hope that Paul, who drafted up an absolutely beautiful letter to Hylion, would have got a response. And to my understanding, and I do not want to presume that PJ Ski as well did up a, a letter to Hylion. And it is my uh, understanding that neither one of those two uh, have received any type of reply. Uh, on those uh, forms of what I would consider to be formal correspondence. Um, emails, not so much, not so much. And I'm going to leave a link in my video 
I did leave a link in the uh, comments section. I hope Dexter doesn't mind. Uh, I went out a little bit on a limb a little bit and just ask that if there's going to be thousands of people who watch these videos and they appreciate the content that I've got coming through on Hylion and the transparency that I provide, take that little bit of an extra step and take those links of these videos, that of which, and I just want to clarify, um, I don't get compensation from Hylion for providing these. I do it for the sheer sake of doing it. Um, I feel an internal motivation to put these out, and that's exactly what I do. If I did not feel that internal motivation, I would not do it. I know how important that is. this is. I had hesitation to put this out. What am I going to say? How am I going to reach people to allow them some level of comfort in understanding that every single investor in this company right now is underwater? Every single one of them. How do I provide value to the situation? How do I provide some sort of motivation and encouragement for people who might have got in involved in this company in over their head? How can I provide that, that value, that real true value? Me, I'm fine. My stock position is what it is. Some might consider it big. Some might consider it small. I don't really care. It's appropriate for me. It makes sense for me. But I will leave the link to investor relations down in the comments section. Take this video, copy and paste it, send it over to them. Um, I expect zero response, zero. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. It's, it's the only thing that I can think of to try to get their attention, to try to understand that at least some level of bottom line reciprocation is absolutely in order right now. We need it the most right now with the stock in the dumpster, four more bullets to fire, and this company has gone tits up. It has gone tits up. And they are leaning against the very funding that they were provided by coming to public markets by the very investors that they are pissing off right now. And, and you want to tell me that I don't have the big picture through Twitter? No problem. Everybody is is entitled to their opinion. Um, I would like you to tell me what big picture I'm missing right now. Um, don't just make those vague assumptions of me that somehow my scrutiny is unwarranted. Um, there's a mass out there of people who would agree with my scrutiny to highly on right now. And it is absolutely justified. Um, the company is not responsible for their stock price right now because the rest of the market's going down. Bullshit. A company is always, always responsible for their company in public markets. And you know who is ultimately responsible? The top guy, the CEO. <laughs> if, if you don't like that reality or you think somehow I'm missing the big picture, then please tell me your version for me so I can understand more about where I place blame, for the lack of better terms. A company is always responsible for what is going on with the companies as it reflects in public markets. If you don't like that level of scrutiny, then you can go private. It's that simple. But driving shareholder value as a publicly traded company is absolutely at the forefront, if not goal number one of the company. And if you think for somehow Hylion gets immunity from that charge, then me and you do absolutely see drastically different worlds that we live in, okay? A couple things I wanna talk about here. Let's start with the nuts and bolts. I, I really wanna drive this home. Why I invest in the company, okay? Anybody invests in the company not to spend hours and hours on YouTube trying to fulfill a gap that is created by Hylion right now with their lack of transparency on the market. If you look back at the transparency, it is unacceptable. It is unacceptable. Count the number of articles that are written. I think Investor Pal uh, Place has, has just gotten tired uh, of, of beating this thing down so much that nobody really cares anymore. So they've stopped writing about it. Um, Hylion has stopped uh, writing about themselves. Business Wire has stopped posting. The last uh, news feed of any reputable value on Hylion, I believe, is uh, from the beginning of November. Um, we are almost concluding January of 2022. Okay. I digress. The main reason why anybody invests in a stock or puts capital to risk in the stock market 
whether it be through a highly on holdings or an index fund or a value stock like J&J or Procter & Gamble or Home Depot is to make money, okay? Anybody who tells you different is completely misguided. I don't know anybody who just wants to invest for the sheer sake of investing. Let's, let's clearly define our terms here, folks, okay? In the investing landscape, the sheer ultimate goal of investing is money. That's it. It's not spiritual enlightenment. It, it, it's not to make yourself a better person. As a matter of fact, you get involved with financial markets, you're going to be expected as a human being through your tolerance to accept probably more levels of stress than you would otherwise uh, deal with if you did not deal in financial markets at all. Okay. Money. So if you draw a circle and you just put money right in the middle and you say, okay, we've got this company, highly on holdings. And if our sheer intention was to make money, we start to draw some arms off of that core center, that nucleus, and try to understand what it is that is going to contribute to that end, because that is the ultimate end, okay? Make money, okay? The luxury in the stock market is such that you can take a position and you can hold that position indefinitely. As long as the position doesn't go out of business, you have the luxury of holding that position indefinitely until you meet that end, okay? I'm gonna talk about some of the damage that's being caused by the stock right now, but I do wanna talk about some of the things that I jotted down that are some of the offsh offshoots on how that core value can be realized. Number one, is there an effort and a movement toward renewable energy? Okay. And part of my due diligence is looking at the regulated, regulated utility space. I, I did my due diligence before coming on on Dominion Energy. We've got offshore wind going on right now. Uh, we have solar going on right now. A couple state pieces of legislation have come through North Carolina as well as uh, Virginia, where I'm domiciled with strategic goals to go to um, uh, net zero emissions goals. And they do it multifaceted, okay? To not only power homes using um, uh, liquefied natural gas uh, and um, uh, the natural gas to power the homes, to use uh, solar and wind energy as well to move toward that uh, cleaner future, uh, a zero emissions profile by 2045. You would think that that's somewhat arbitrary, but I think a lot of these folks are looking at this being kind of the beginning of this movement to a cleaner future. In, in, other, in, in other words, understanding that the path that we're on now is unsustainable if our future is a, 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 a fossil fuel dominated future. Okay, so, so when Thomas Healy talks about the vision of Hylion, it is aligning the Hylion solution with this vision of a cleaner future, okay? Now, how does that relate to making money, okay? It is absolutely an offshoot to your uh, substantiation and your conviction on whether or not you put a dollar to work in this company. That is what you're investing in, that movement toward the future. Now, if renewables, okay, are not realized in the marketplace, and let's say another uh, uh, march toward a clean fuel like hydrogen is the way of the future, and, and, and renewables goes away, okay, then your, your thesis has to change. In other words, are you investing in renewables or are you investing in a hydrogen future? We are at the very beginning stages of understanding this multi-decade, and I would say two, if in accordance with a lot of these regulated utilities, I'm looking at aligning their objectives and vision toward the future for a cleaner future, they cannot do this overnight. There's infrastructure being built right now as we speak, okay? I don't want to speak too much about the offshore wind energy, both on the North Carolina coast and the Virginia coast. But if you look at those projects, they are in their infancy. I mean, very, very beginnings, but the, the, the projections for how many households that can be serviced um, with the uh, anticipated wind farms that are going to go out, uh, out there, 660,000 homes powered by uh, wind energy 
uh, once this project is built out over the next couple of years in meeting those long-term uh, sustainable goals that have been put forward by the state legislation. So that vision for the future is something that you need to keep in mind when you're looking at these companies like Hylion, Nikola, the regulated utilities, certainly. The, the energy producing entities, when we're looking at how is it that a company like this can look at the effort that is being made, and that is really the, the bubble that I attach to the money stage. Are we investing in something that we're moving toward in the future, or are we closing down, okay? Now, a closing down is you're investing in your majors, your oil majors, ExxonMobil, Chevron, Royal Dutch Shell, Valero, et cetera. Royal Dutch Shell, if you look at some of the majors, they're looking to segue their existing businesses into what is going to be a renewable energy future, okay? So where, where does your loyalty lie? Does it lie on the back of the wave, closing down a fossil fuel era um, that has really emboldened um, our, our, how we've got our energy and where we're going into the future with renewables and, and of course, nuclear uh, as we move into the next couple of decades and how that's going to unfold uh, over the long term. The next thing I look at in the core nucleus is I just drew a scatter plot of how this money is going to be realized. And you ask yourself, is there a need for this product? Is there a need? A lot of people are coming on and they're saying, well, the Cummins engine, it's CNG, it's over for Hylion. I'm not sure if I, I, I mean, I don't understand that that has to be an end all, be all. Uh, in other words, Cummins is going to dominate the market and all others will cease to exist. I don't buy that. Is there a need for the product? And so we start looking at the Hylion products and we start seeing, well, is there acceptance from the fleets? A lot of people would say nobody's buying the product. Um, that's not true either. We have these products in the hands of fleets right now. We are just at the very beginning stages of these companies enjoying these products and identifying for themselves where they can be integrated into their fleets. Is there a need? Yes. We are defining that level of need right now. As the need starts to mature and that need creates that demand against Hylion to provide that solution to them, that will be the very source of the validation that we get once we have this product that is in the hands of more than a handful of companies that we have right now in very low volumes. And that's something that you need to look at. Are you interested in Hylion Holdings right now while they're in the low volume stage? Gosh, probably not. They're not producing anything of any substance. Now, there was a calculation run on the existing 1600 orders right now coming out at about 350 million of revenue. That's if all of it's profit, okay? If they can march toward a 35% margin on those profits, I will be happy with that. But to make any type of substantial money, we need to be talking about order books, 10,000 minimum per year. And really in accordance with their projections, they talked about 15,000 units on each, the ERX and the hybrid units. We are in an absolutely anemic phase of the company right now. The question is, can we get to those numbers that are sustainable uh, year over year and, and something that is absolutely meaningful and, and not something that is really quite irrelevant? Uh, and Sherry Baker alluded to this on the last two calls to say, look, the earnings are going to be uh, non-consequential. And, and I believe Q4 is going to be that. I think a lot of people are like, well, I'm just going to hang on until Q4. And then these magic earnings of a million dollars or whatever it's going to be are going to somehow justify whether or not I stay in the stock or not. If that's your justification, I would sell out now, honestly, because the conviction that's going to be necessary to see this thing through and for the company to go from these um, sp sporadic numbers at best that they have now and realizing and defining that need in industry going forward, it's going to take time. It's going to, not going to take one quarter, and it's not going to be anything that is demonstrated on this anemic balance sheet right now 
that highly on holdings turns out that, that is going to substantiate with that. Now, if they turn out a million revenue, it's going to be a lot different compared to quarter over quarter to show that there is revenue growth going on and that the company actually has a, the ability to sell product and make money. There's going to be value there, certainly. And uh, trajectories and projections can be made based on uh, those findings within the balance sheet. But we're going to have to wait till Q4. To be honest with you, if I can't get reciprocation on an email from investor relations, do you think my expectations is such that they're going to turn out and surprise to the upside uh, and actually turn a profit this quarter? Hell no. It, it's just not going to happen. So you guys have, have got this. It seems like a long way away when every single day that goes by on this stock, the stock does nothing but go down. It, it, it has not gone up for the last few months. I mean, it, it, just, it has a day where it closes up five cents. Um, it's up 100% of the time after hours. And during the market, it is down 100% of the time. Um, argue with me. Um, but maybe perhaps I'm not seeing the big picture. But that's what I'm seeing with my lens is that the stock is absolutely in, in absolute desperation right now. There's nothing good to be said about it, nothing. Um, I could sit here and tell you that um, the, 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 it's good. Um, the only thing I'll tell you that it's good, which will uh, refresh some of you guys, is if this company is going to make it long-term, the further it goes down, the more of an opportunity it provides to buy the stock. That is the neutral, rational, non-emotional way of looking at whether or not through your due diligence and uh, justification of taking a position in this company right now uh, it has any type of, of merit. The further it goes down, if the company is going to make it long-term and we start to realize some of these uh, 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 needs for companies going forward and Hylion is able to fill those needs um, based on the industry demand, then how can anybody say that because the stock price is down, that it is not, not justifiable to buy the stock at these levels. It just does not equate with me. And if you're looking at applying whatever it is based on your uh, application in stock market investing, it, the further the stock goes down, the more of a buying opportunity it will provide, not less, but more. The, the, the question is, where, where is that end? And the, the scary part now really is, will this company make it? I, I think there's a framework that I will talk about that will show that perhaps maybe there is a, a net or a framework underneath of this stock that in my assumption cannot go below. Um, will it? Could it? Certainly, certainly. Um, but if I'm going to provide a neutral application to this and not hype the stock. Um, I'm super excited about being a highly on holdings uh, investor. Super excited. Um, I can look at my Walmart stock and be super excited about owning Walmart stock. Stock hasn't moved in two years. Um, what's ex ex exciting about that? Um, there is no emotion in stock market investing. So when we look at those two applications, it's exciting to be a Tesla stock owner right now. If you own the stock and you're sitting on some profit, et cetera. Um, my conviction is not to look at a Tesla company and be excited about investing in Tesla. I think it's extremely overvalued. And, you know, to enter into a, a company that's overvalued, um, which I have just done in 2021, the most overvalued company, the two over most, uh, overvalued companies that I bought in two, 2021 were Amazon and Salesforce. Those are the two businesses that I wanted to be invested in. And I truly understood what I was getting invested in. But I cannot, with good conscience, buy a company like Tesla that is absolutely overvalued right now, selling a car to a demographic that does not reach the masses. It doesn't. It doesn't. Most people can buy a Honda Accord at $20,000. And they will not justify going toward what I consider to be a luxury vehicle as opposed to buying the two most important cars that have been put out over the last 30 years, the Honda Accord and the Toyota Camry. It's just that simple. Those cars reach the masses. Tesla does not. Whether or not they can sustain that 
growth trajectory that the, is being priced into the stock right now, I say is futile. You're investing in a futile investment that cannot maintain that trajectory. So when we're looking at true value and we're looking at sustainability over the long term, that's what you have to understand. Two or three years ago, you had every analyst on the street talking about Tesla, short selling Tesla because it was absolutely going to go down. Every single one of those analysts right now are on board with the Tesla train because they cannot stick with their conviction that the stock is overvalued. Just that simple. Now, make your investments as you, as you will, okay? Remember the core thesis, money. If you invest in a company like Tesla and make money, good on you. It doesn't make it a good investment. It doesn't. You may, may make, make money, but it does not make it a good investment, okay? When we talk about the core thesis of money and we talk about the next arm that is going to contribute to that money-making uh, opportunity with a company, any company, highly on holding specifically, is the product itself. What type of validation has the product been put forward? Um, I saw some uh, interesting comments put through on scrutinizing Hylion in saying that they had product that was ready to be turned out in 2021. Are they liars? They chose to take the e, uh, Hybrid EX and improve upon that product during its public time. Um, whether or not that was a bad decision or an ill-timed decision, or it was a decision that they had on the back burner that they just decided to do because now they've got a windfall of money and they've got the time to do it, or whether or not that they thought that it was absolutely necessary to take the core thesis of the Hybrid EX and improve upon it. Marked improvements? Yes, I would believe that it was. Easier to install, easier in uh, shipping the product, so it's more kind of out of the box type of an application on the install. Um, is it more ready now based on incorporating those improvements to the product to where they can take that product and make it available uh, to the mass market with a lot more certainty that they're not putting out a product that um, on the onset was a great, great idea to supplement CNG horsepower and to supplement fuel savings on the diesel side to take that product and improve it to the best of their uh, ability. For me personally, with my lens, I look at that as an absolute win. A company that has the ability to identify internal procedures that are not as good as they need it to be and to take the internal it's basically like a result of an internal audit finding and they take those procedures and they revamp them and they revamp them across the board. And I believe that the delay, whatever cost to the bottom line to Hylion that cost them was a move that was absolutely in their best interest. And it's one that I stand behind. It's not one that I scrutinize. Would I have liked for them to sell 15,000 units of the old product? I guess so. If the potential was to piss off 10% of those customers because it was too hard to install or by nature of the uh, observations or criticisms that Hylion found on the Hybrid EX uh, before they turned it out uh, prevented some of those negative feedbacks to the company. So on the onset, they would have made a ton of money. But on the long-term sustainability piece, they would have lost customers. They would have suffered. Their reputation would have suffered. Has Hylion have been provided any negative feedback on the landscape? This is something that I look for and I have yet to find it. The, 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 the feedback that I've got, um, albeit scarce, has been extremely positive thus far, uh, very positive. 25 uh, uh, miles of, of BEV credits that feeds right into the California market, New York. What, whatever they're doing to leverage those markets, we don't know because we are not provided that information, um, the improvements on, on, on the hybrid product. But the product it itself with its uh, relationship with FEV um, out of um, uh, Auburn Hills, Michigan, very, very important to run that through the scrutiny and the rigors. If you look into FEV, it's going to help provide some of the framework in understanding some of the recipe that's been thrown into this big boiling pot of what makes up the multi-faceted highly on holdings that we talk about from a week-to-week -week perspective. And FEV plays a critical, critical role 
in the Hybrid EX product, as well as the similarities between the two products as it relates to the Hypertruck ERX, the flagship product that is yet to be taken to mass scale. Right now, involved in the roadshow using the prototype version, uh, taking to each of the uh, prospective customers and having that product available for site visits as well um, to get those would-be customers that firsthand knowledge of the Hypertruck ERX, which uh, by all admission is probably not a final product, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close if the renderings and the learnings from the hybrid EX uh, is any indication of how scrutinizing highly on is on the, the internal product uh, validation that they require tells me that they've got a high level of conviction before they turn this out and put these into the hands of, let's say, a Detmar Logistics to be subject to the rigor of over the road demand of <laughs> uh, overloaded uh, loads of frac sand, um, overloaded uh, drive mix game, just talked about the uh, needing the over, overloaded permit um, to, to, to carry um, that overloaded uh, sand load of, I believe, over 80,000 pounds. So if those rigors aren't happening behind the scenes and they're being put out into the fleets prematurely, then whatever internal validation Hylion seems to identify as necessary at this point, I have to be behind that. Otherwise, I, I won't invest in the stock because I'm investing in products that are going to go to the market prematurely. And remember the center core nucleus that is holistically going to contribute to that bottom line driving shareholder value, and that is the product itself. And what has transpired over the short two years here with FBB, the internal product validation, the earmarking uh, by both Thomas Healy and Sherry Baker uh, to gain that EPA approval here that we should get uh, in the back half of 2022 after winter validation is happen happened. Those will be the last two pieces of, of really putting this multi-dimensional puzzle together for Hylion before that product is introduced to mass scale and what I can garner to be the one OEM that they have um, under their belt right now uh, in Peterbilt. So the product plays into that bottom line when I'm looking at the opportunity here um, to leverage this opportunity to wealth and making money in this position. The other hybrid offshoot to the to the money element, and this is just a flow chart that I made for myself here in preparation of this video, it is the plan, is the plan itself. Was coming to markets through the SPAC process part of the plan? Yeah, I, I believe it was. I believe that they needed to raise capital to, to realize their business model going forward. Now, if you don't like their business model and you love the sexy approach of building a giga factor and you, you, factory, and you like the sound of that, and, and even though the Nikola product looks kind of weird and it looks like it has no business in long haul trucking, and, and, and you um, think that by nature of their uh, forward leaning media campaign, that that's something that you want to invest in based on your scrutiny over that business plan, no problem, no problem. I'm looking at the same things on the Hylion side and I'm looking at this plan and I'm asking myself, is this plan that they have in place realistic? Can they meet the demands of uh, industry as we evolve together? Is the plan going to evolve and scale up as we evolve as a company? Company's brand new. What is the plan for the, for, the, for the future? And I think the strategic framework behind the plan is provided uh, most elegantly on the earnings calls that have been rolled out over the last three quarters. You can talk all day. I can talk all day about what my conjecture is, presumptions about where, how the stock is going to end up at a certain price target. At the end of the day, what is the plan going forward? And is Hylion Holdings going to be around long enough to walk this road and evolve this plan to something to where we look back on this company now and say, it was immature at that time. The company was just maturing. It was identifying where its place was in the market and establishing that plan to, to, to deal with injects, to, to deal with a global pandemic, to deal with supply chain issues, 
as they come up, things that could not have been foresaw when the uh, company was rolled out public. A lot of people are saying Hylion's the only one that is um, impacted and they're using that as an excuse as to why they can't roll out their product. These are the types of scrutiny, scrutinies that you might get lucky and be right on those presumptions, but where, where is the fact base behind that shot across the bow? If, if, if that's your conviction on the company, then don't invest in the company. If you believe that Hylion is being misleading with using the global supply chain, which is it's, it's real, and your assumption is that they should be immune to the effects of the global supply chain issues going on right now, if that's your opinion, no problem. You can invest based on those conjectures. But I believe that it is conjecture. You could be right. They could be using it as an excuse. But I've been given no indication up to this point as to the um, always really taking the high road and where there is no news to be reported on, I don't believe Hylion is going to make stuff up. I believe that they're taking a different approach to this. And they've done this from the beginning. It's not really a big surprise that Hylion Holdings looks at it in their best interest to look, protect their intellectual property, protect what they've got going on, establish the workplace to generate these solutions to the best of their ability with what is available in the marketplace now. Is their plan something that you buy into? Is part of that plan um, eliminating the investor relations department altogether? <laughs> I'm not saying I agree 100% with their plan, guys. The plan is what it is. As an investor, I get to look at that plan, scrutinize, identify what I do and don't like about the plan, and make my investing thesis just based on this arm of my overall goal of making money with this company and, and invest accordingly or not invest accordingly based on that scrutiny of that particular plan. A lot of people are frustrated right now with what was put out in 2020 on the investor presentation and the uh, estimated numbers that were put out there. I'm one of them. Um, I scrutinized that up and down. What validation, what data went into anticipating or forecasting that you would have uh, the Hypertruck ERX available in 2021. And if there are things that transpired that they did not know about at the time of making those projections, no problem. Just explain that to the marketplace. Hey, on the initial onset, there were certain certifications and validations that we did not take into account when we rolled those projections out to would be uh, uh, investors in the company uh, and, and believe them to be true at the time of putting that out, it turned out that we needed to do steps Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie before uh, realizing those projections, okay, which put the delay on the Hypertrek ERX. Just explain it, okay? So I have scrutiny on the plan. Whether or not this grand plan that Hylion has put themselves on and taking everything that they can humanly control and putting that plan in motion, whether or not it's going to contribute to the greater whole is yet to be seen. The verdict is still out. The verdict is still out whether or not you believe in the plan going forward. The next that I have that's gonna to contribute to that bottom line core nucleus of making money on this investment um, is the team. Do we have a team in place right now? Scrutiny is rampant. There's no doubt about it. Uh, and I'm quick to identify the, 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 the team or the original investors that got in and seemingly parachuted out of this company with their neon green parachutes because they got the stock for seven cents on this initial deal and then sold for market value for millions and millions of dollars collectively and now are either out of the stock or they still own stock, but it's nothing on them. They can ride this thing to zero. Their capital to risk was zero because if the stock goes out of business, they're gonna lose 7%, a seven cents for every share that they owned. They take on zero risk, zero. All the risk is put on the public marketplace. And that's why when I talk about the importance of reciprocation, it's as if, and this is my perception, is that the retail investing community is all but being forgotten. And do they mean to do that? No, no, I don't believe they do. 
I don't believe it's a malicious intent to leave retail investors out of the equation. They know how important it is to have those public fundings. It was by that very nature of exercising that option to go public via SPAC that they received that public uh, funding in the first place. But the team that's in place right now with the executive board, uh, Elaine Chow just this week took a ride in the hyper truck. Um, I look at those things, I think with a lot of people's lens and I'm like, who cares? Uh, I, that means really very little to nothing. Um, if you tell me that Elaine Chow has contributed to aligning certain business connections between Hylion and businesses out there, both uh, domestically and abroad, now those are things that I'm interested in. But as far as like selling Elaine Chow on the idea of Hylion Holding Solutions when she was named to the board four months ago seems to me a little bit too late. In other words, she was sold on the idea four months ago. And, and now she needs to be what resold on the idea that the hyper truck is a good idea or if it was a means to an end. In other words, she needs to have that firsthand experience to pick up the phone and make those calls to her connections, which she has. She has the connections. So when I look at the team and I look at you know Gallagher and I look at some of the other on the executive board as well as uh, the upper management, I can't see a problem. Um, insofar as the scrutiny, if it's justified or not, that they're not making sales right now, for whatever reason, they're not making sales. Is it premature to expect sales is, is really the, the, the key question. And if the answer is yes, then it's a futile question to ask at this point. It's irrelevant. Um, if, if we're not at a point right now to start to allow this product to be entered into the marketplace and be sold to customers, then it, it's, it's a futile argument that has no merit right now as this company is in an evolutionary stage of the company. And if it's premature to expect sales prematurely of the company, then it's a futile argument at this particular juncture. I'm one of those that would love a, a, a binding a LOI from Agility for 500 of those ERXs that were put on a non-binding proposal. We have heard nothing since the initial rollout. I think that is valid scrutiny enough. Is there still merit to those original 1,590 orders that were put on the books to get investors excited? We've heard nothing of the sort on a non-binding order that any of those 1,590 orders can be uh, walked away from at any time. So there's that limbo a little bit that investors are looking at to say, eh, Hylion, come on, is, is, is this real or is it not? Is there real conviction or is there not? Is the conviction based on some of that early on hype that was generated by Hylion that a lot of investors bought in and, and, and has died off over the time? Or am I, am I just being uh, overreaching with my expectations insofar as the orders are still there, no problem. We will realize those orders in the future. The problem is these things become stagnant and they become stale. And then they start to be uh, honestly a detriment. In other words, if Hylion had just come out of the gates and just kept all that stuff a secret, keep it a secret. Let the stock drive down to $5. Let it drive down. Instead of just coming on, boom, boom, we got another order, 250, A and G, the network, boom, Mona, Agility, they're with us, Sultan's excited, boom, battery management system, eight minutes, bam, bam, bam. Did they suffer from premature neon green ejaculation? Perhaps, perhaps. Because I think strategically, if I had this thing to do over, Paul posed this question on Rat Pack Stocks. If I had the ability to go back and invest in highly on holdings again, in the same capacity that I did, would I do it again? He said, I don't know. And I said out loud while I was watching his video, absolutely. 100%. I'm still just as excited now as I was then. Is it hard to justify my excitement entering into the stock right now when I should be, but I don't feel excited at all by picking up shares of a company that I bought at 20 that I'm buying now at four? I should feel more excited. Um, those excitements will uh, evolve and transpire if, in fact, the company comes to a little bit more maturity and we have a little bit more substance 
to 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 extrapolate from uh, the company. Okay, but super important when we're talking about that type of thing. You know, I I look back on it and I say no, but I, I just think that the rollout of information we've entered into this delay period and kind of a a hiatus of product validation and needing more time for those validations, are, are companies going to just electively step forward and place those orders on the books? If they did start doing that, the stock would move. There's no doubt about it. You know, rolling out the Monet order on the last earnings call, I thought was a really poorly move. It was a poor move. It was stupid. Um, it was not strategic at all. And I think it absorbed the Monet order insofar as it did nothing. Uh, with regard to what interest that should have garnered. And that means international exposure to Mexico. Um, that's what it means. That 40 order from Monet Transport was an enormous piece of news, enormous. And if Hylion would have integrated their uh, style of real close to the best and just saying, you know what, to hell with it. We know the plan is gonna take some years to transpire. Let's not feed the market right now. Let's just go on this dry spell. You would have had a whole hell of a lot investors. You would have had a recessed stock price, but you would have had this arsenal of fabulous information that I think released on the onset provided this premature ejaculation, right? Everybody was like, ha, 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 this is incredible. It, it's almost becoming a detriment to the company at this point, right? In that we scrutinize uh, what should be celebrated. And that's an agility order of a thousand hypertruck ERXs, but it loses credibility as time marches on. And I don't know if Hylion realizes that, um, but that, that, that is my assessment is that those are uh, becoming stale. And if they're not careful, they're gonna lose every bit of momentum that was created from those initial orders, right? A and it's really gonna come to a fruition when they come uh, uh, available to deliver on those hypertruck ERXs. And agility says, you know what? Uh, we're not interested in a thousand anymore. Why don't you give us ten? I think that's going to be detrimental for the stock as well. Um, where that initial hype garnered a lot of interest in the company, shot the stock to fifty-eight, which really was the worst thing that could ever happen for this company. Phenomenal idea at its core, but it's the worst thing that could ever happen to this company. Got so many people into this company at its high. And it hurt a lot of people. And the damage that's been done, which I'm going to talk about a little bit in this video, it, it, it could be irreparable. And it could be, uh, it could take years um, to actually uh, recover from this. The last thing I want to talk about, and is absolutely the necessary pedigree when we talk about that nucleus of making money, um, and that is sales. Uh, everybody's talking about they need to make sales to realize the value 100%. I could not disagree. I couldn't agree more. I am 100% with you guys on this. If Hylion can't sell product, then this was just a really well-timed project. It's a project. Um, a company is only as good as their ability to sell their idea to others. Uh, I've talked about the, um, uh, really the, um, the genetics of a good sale. In other words, there's cold call. And you're selling somebody who had no idea that you were going to call, has no idea of your product, has no idea of the benefits that that said product could provide to your business. This, I believe, is a, a fortified sale. I believe it's something that will sell itself. In other words, I don't believe that it's going to take a lot of selling on behalf of Hylion. I think the very sheer nature of the fact that they're not selling now speaks to the stage of the selling cycle that they're in, which is the beginning, which is the beginning. Um, and if, if, if they could sell cold uh, uh, against their order book and, and uh, build up that order book uh, to have uh, kind of a war chest of a queue before they enter, enter into mass scale up, I think that'd be great. I think that'd be great. For whatever reason, that's not going on right now. And some of the bare conviction out there, which is justified is why not? Why not? If there is such an interest in renewables and there is such a need on the landscape and there is such an interest in the product, 
there is an interest in the ability of and and an acknowledgement to the plan Hylian has to roll this out to the fleets uh, in a cost effective manner, one that can substitute for diesel without giving up power and performance, uh, without giving up payload, right? Why don't we have sales? I, I can't dispute that. And I, I'm sure as hell not one of those guys that says, you as a bear on the company are wrong by saying that. No, you're not. It, it, it's, it's just a, a statement. Um, it's, it's one that so far is right. Where are those sales? Outside the 1600, okay? If I'm going to be a, a bull on the company, I have to look at the order book that we have and say, this is not nothing. It is something. Uh, I didn't know Monet Transport was even in the equation when that was rolled out on the Q3 call. I didn't know they were in the equation. So I did my research on Monet. And I was like, this is their entrance to uh, Mexico. They already have their in to Canada. We have the entire North American market wrapped up from Mexico to Canada. This is insanely good. It, it's insane. It speaks to that framework of what I'm talking about. Four bullets left. Four. What is the framework? that is gonna hold this vessel afloat before it sinks. This speaks to that, that, that framework, all right? That was really the totality of understanding why it is what we do, okay? So far, we have not realized any type of realization of the core nucleus of that goal, and that is money. We have, for the last 18 months, eroded from that very goal. We have done nothing but erode from that goal. There has been so much positive news, perhaps maybe rolled out in a timely manner at the time. Maybe it was Hylian's choice to roll that out and not withhold, of course, that information at the time and providing that to the open markets. Was it premature? I don't know. By nature of rolling that information out now, are they lack of information now with the extended period that they've got now for product validation, uh, only magnified by the supply chain shortage now, right? So was that initial rollout uh, premature? Uh, what's been done has been done. Um, it's been put out there for public scrutiny. But when you look at that framework and you look at the eight minutes and you look at the product improvement and you look at the plan and the lean business model and you look at the need in industry and you look at the team and you look at the company and you look at the share price and you start looking at all of these things does it have that fabric? Does it have that pedigree of a company that can absolutely dominate the class eight space? And that's where your conviction lies, okay? If you looked across my highly on videos, I don't say buy the stock, sell the stock. I share my stock position with you, take it for what it is, no problem. But I do believe that I have straight away, and I'm not perfect, guys, I'm a human freaking being, okay? Um, I, I am entitled to make uh, mistakes, okay? I'm not Graham Stephan, who's perfect. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm an imperfect investor. Um, I could have this wrong. I could have it nailed down dead right, boom. We look back on this and laugh and say, man, we were just in the beginning stages of the company. What were we so worried about? At the time, it was really difficult. What makes it easy now is the stock is approaching that $50 mark and we shouldn't have been worried so much uh, in the first place. They just hadn't had the time to realize some of those things that the framework, the stars weren't aligned yet to realize that very pedigree as to why we invest in this company, or if you choose to scrutinize the, the pedigree as to why you didn't invest in the company, no problem. Okay, each investor out there is entitled to their own opinion. Real takeaways from this video, net zero emissions being a goals of some of the regulated utilities out there. 2045 is what I'm seeing on a lot of pallets. Um, I researched Dominion Energy before coming on. Um, renewable energy is a thing that's not going away, okay? This is an initiative that puts you on the front of the wave, beginning stages of the surf not something to where you're investing in the old stages of, of, of what has powered industry over the last hundred years. And that is the fossil fuel era. Are we stepping into a new era uh, that's going to stick around this time? My conviction is yes. If you believe renewables are going away, then Hylion is not a play for you, okay? Make no mistake about it. 
Hylion is looking to leverage existing infrastructure with the absolute expectation that renewables are going to be on the upswing and be that very solution that helps to supplement in the, in the beginning stages of and hopefully replace fossil fuels going forward into the future. All right. So that was my spiel on the nucleus and the money grab as, as to why we do what we do. All right. I talked about the rules of neutral application. Um, just this week, uh, I've been the subject of a lot of scrutiny. Uh, no problem. Um, I try to be as neutral as I can in providing my scrutiny back. Uh, I just find it interesting how there's a lot of people out there um, who don't know how to provide uh, proper scrutiny uh, or appropriate scrutiny. Uh, and one that uh, provides the correct level of respect. Uh, I've been told to shut up through social media. Uh, I've been told through uh, my close networks and I'm waiting for one to fall off. Um, both of two of the four channel creators that I work most closely with um, that I have been a, a, a devote supporter of um, are, are scrutinizing my angle uh, and not providing me the latitude to say what I want to say and when I want to say it. In other words, I don't have the full picture. So what? So what? Um, I'm entitled to say what I want, when I want, how I want, why? Because my agenda has nothing to do with salvaging my project, okay? The, indiv the Independent Investor Channel represents me, and it represents the people out there who don't have a voice, that are provided a voice through my comments section. Disagree? Agree. No problem. You will not provide, you will not get scrutiny from me. But when you start to step over the line, and people know where that line is with me, and they step over it all the time, uh, you need to sell all your stock because the stock is going to zero. Those are things that I will not, I will not engage with. Okay, those are escapes from thinking. I'm working very, very hard here to identify pockets of value for those folks out there that may end up realizing this thing to that money core nucleus stage that over the last 18 months have been really kicked in the teeth. And I find it interesting how if there was somebody out there hurting, um, I wouldn't kick them in the teeth. And I think that's what a lot of people feel good about doing when they identify those people who are down. You want to know why? Because they're down and pathetic themselves. They really are. For those channels out there, and I do want to give an ample shout out. Um, I've got um, uh, Henry um, with, um, with his channels really good. Um, Drive Mix Game, Dexter, uh, doing a good job. Uh, PJ Ski, uh, really nice, very interesting. He plays an angle of a psychology um, that I like too. Why we do what we do kind of helps put stock ownership in a box so it doesn't consume your life. I don't know. <laughs> I said on my live stream, it is just a stock holding, right? Um, and, and finally, Paul with Rat Pack Stocks, who it, it just absolutely fabulous mind. It's interesting. Each and every one of these cats um, are providing information free of charge. So before you're quick to scrutinize, um, perhaps maybe sit back and ask yourself, look, if I don't like this free content, uh, I'm free to unsubscribe and choose the content that I consume um, for, my, for my own benefit. Uh, if you certainly do not find value in the content, don't watch it. No problem. See, I'm not one of those guys who has to salvage all opinions. I'll salvage opinions from a positive or negative that want to be here. That is the key. But if your sheer intent is to come in and just shoot uh, um, shots across the brow at me, um, I would recheck your compass because I have invited many of those people on my live stream. And you want to know how many people have taken me up on that offer to come and debate me live? Zero. Best decision you ever made. You do not want to debate me on a live and, and, and fall back on the rationale that you use to scrutinize me. I will chew you up and spit you out. I, I really will. All right. Am I angry on this topic? PJ uh, reached out um, and, and, and he, uh, he mentioned my name on a video. And I, I thought it was awesome because I watched it and I was like, wow, that's the first person that's actually watched my highly on videos and got an accurate emotional um, description on where I'm coming, coming from. Am I mad? For me personally to put myself on a plan with the conviction that I have makes me second guess what I look at to evaluate a company. 
And that's personally some insight for me. It's not about the money. Um, I believe that the money will end up following through, but how I was so wrong on this company, and I have been, I have been wrong all the way up until the time of filming this video, I have been wrong on this company. And to say that I was angry when I come across my Hylion videos to the extent that um, there wasn't going to be an enjoyment to the content, I thought that was the piece that was um, a, a little shallow in understanding that uh, I might be intense, but I'm an extremely happy man. I'm a happy man, uh, and I can compartmentalize topics. There's no doubt about it. When I talk about the, the government and the lack of efficiency, I get angry. When I talk about certain things about the real estate market right now and, and what I see transpiring, it makes me angry. When I talk about the labor shortages and the lack of people out there who are willing to see value in a hard day's work, that makes me angry it, because I think people are not following through with the idea that you need to work for everything that you get in this life. That's, that's the truth. It's a neutral application when we're looking at stocks, okay? I talked about where my motivation lies, okay? Um, I'm sure every video that I come out with, I got people who are talking about, I'm trying to save my skin. I have no idea what that means, but thank you for the constructive criticism. I'm trying to boost uh, my channel. Uh, my channel stopped growing a year ago. It's no problem. When I started doing what it is that I wanted to do, my channel stopped growing and I started making more money than I've ever made before on social media. You can define that disconnect for me if you'd like, um, but my live stream is free of charge uh, and I'll continue to give away the goods in that product for those that want to consume it. No problem. No problem. Uh, I believe in my heart of hearts that there is value there. If you don't like it, get lost. I have no place for you at all because I can say that through social media because if you guys would just make this easy for me and I could have all 28,000 of my subscribers just unsubscribe and I could start from zero again, I would just start the channel. I would just shut down the channel because obviously that's a sign for me that nobody wants to watch my message. No problem. I, I'm somehow trying to salvage my channel. My channel's not about me, you idiot. My channel's about you. It's trying to fight a system that I believe is designed to hold you down and put you in a swim lane where society would tell you you belong, okay? It takes away from individual thought. Social media makes you think that you need to think like everybody else. And I'm here to tell you that you don't, okay? You need to define for yourself your own path, okay? And you're gonna have to think about that. You're going to have to think about that. And you're going to have to make a concerted effort to think on your own. A lot of people allow so many different people to do the thinking for them. They allow the influences to come into their mind, and it allows them to just be a made-up pawn that is controlled by everybody else. Be independent in your thought and application, all right? I'm certain that I will continue to incur that scrutiny going forward on the channel. There's no doubt about it. The damage in the stock trajectory right now is real. I talked about that a little bit with the psychology of understanding that the further the stock goes down, the more of a buy it is. That is the consensus takeaway. A lot of people are applying a rationale that the further the stock goes down, the less of a buy it is. I've been told I was wrong. I am not. I am right. You are wrong if your application in this company if you have conviction on it, making it, that it is not more of a buy as it goes down. It's just that plain and simple. It is the reverse psychology that you have to apply in stock market investing. It cannot be about looking at the stock and saying, it's really, really down. I shouldn't invest in it right now. When six months from now, one year from now, two years from now, three years from now, we may look at this and we may, may be looking at the, the stock chart and we're like, wow. This went from 58 to four, and I had the opportunity to buy that stock at the bargain basement price of $4 a share, and here it is now at X price in the future. I'm not going to tell you what that price is going to be. I don't know. I can't tell the future. I don't believe in cryptics. I don't believe in psychics. I don't believe in any of that stuff. I don't believe that people have the ability to say, Ryan, this stock is going to zero. I don't believe you. I think that's a, a representative of, of, of your um, um, depth of thought.
I really do. I think that you're using the rationale of the price action day-to-day -day on the stock to evaluate a company is stupid. For a lack of better terms, man, it's stupid. If you want to use that rationale in your own application, no problem. I invest in companies. I invest in companies. This particular company has all the pedigree that I've talked about minus sales. Defined sales we've talked about on this video for sure. But those things are unfair scrutinies right now because what Highly on Holdings is basically telling us through not telling us is that we are premature on that sales cycle. I have to believe that that is true. I have a hard time believing that all of this has been done for nothing. I have a hard time believing that with all of the momentum toward RNG, with all of the momentum toward renewables and the uh, net zero emissions goals that are coming up in every single environmental stewardship report that I read, being on the front of the wave, closing out an old uh, industry that has powered transportation, and has dubbed them the reputation for being the number one polluter on this earth, I have a hard time believing that that framework is, is not going to be able to sustain and hold this company above the mark of zero. I have a hard time believing that. It is my deductive reasoning that goes into that rationale to say that the pedigree, the very net, the framework, that holds this company afloat is strong enough to make sure that this company is provided ample time to realize what is going to drive sales into the future and ultimately drive shareholder value on the bottom line going forward. Guys, I really appreciate you tuning into these, man. It wouldn't be the same movement if it wasn't for you guys. I would do these videos if I got 100 views. I don't care. I do them because I believe the timing is absolutely critical. And I can't thank those other uh, channels enough. I'm open to collaboration. Any one of those guys, I've already invited PJ Ski. We're going to have to uh, make something arrangement because he's dealing on European time. Um, and we will. I will provide that opportunity because it's something that I can humanly control. And I'm going to do it. It's not within my makeup to just sit stale and, and not do anything. This is my therapy. And I think a lot of people get therapy out of it in understanding, look, I still want to remain convicted on this company. I still want to maintain my position. I've sold out of companies before that I've had conviction on only to see them run to the effing moon. And I'm not going to let this one slip away, man. I'm not going to allow that happen because the framework that Ryan talked about and he reemphasizes every single week on his highly on videos, provides me that opportunity to understand that that pedigree that is in place with highly on holdings is strong enough and is absolutely intact enough to hold the ship afloat until they can realize that vision that they have for the future. Guys, leave your comments at the bottom of the video. Subscribe to the message if indeed you like the message. If not, hell, unsubscribe. Drop the mic on me. I could care less, to be honest with you. I get so tired of the scrutiny that comes through the channel. I have to get used to it, honestly, because the more scathing I get and the more out there I put my opinion, um, the more scrutiny I get. Because again, everybody wants to be right in this gig. Nobody, nobody tries to deliver an, uh, a neutral application to look at the positive and negative going on at any one given time, especially with this company. It's either you, you pick your allegiances, either you're absolutely 100%, 100% on board, you know, fanboy for Hylion, or you're absolutely in the bear camp that's going to zero. I think we need to start to come together and find a middle ground on this opportunity. There's no doubt about it. Thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.